the basics of the strike is absolutely nothing to do with pay. The basics are about safety, about our work-life balance. The RMT and all the underground unions are not against the principle and the actuality of night shift. It's just it's got to be brought in in a fair way for ourselves and a fair way for customers and safely. What we're against is it being imposed on us without it being properly negotiated as far as what numbers are needed, what safety what safety measures need to be put in place and also obviously our working lives will change. Some of our staff on stations go from working no nights whatsoever to working a set of seven nights every four weeks without consultation basically or without agreement. They're saying to drivers who work no nights go from working no nights up to working seven sets of nights a year. All of this is done without agreement, so they've now sought to impose uh, those measures and that's clearly not acceptable to our trade union and our three other sister unions that are joining in this, in this action. Personally, at the moment I get one weekend off a month. I think on the, on the working pattern they want to bring in, I get one weekend off every two months. With the night working and the Friday, Saturday, you could, have a, 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 you could definitely be working four lates, dead lates, and then two uh, night, uh, night shift uh, duties, a day off on the Sunday when you're actually finishing on the Sunday, which they're calling a rest day, it's not a rest day, and then back to early turn the following week. That is not acceptable for us as far as we're concerned. At least two, maybe three weekends out of every four for each month. Not acceptable. Some of the proposed rosters for the station side, which is what we know more about, where there would be, you know, sort of people go through 20 weeks without having a weekend. Yeah. One of the shifts uh, at South Kensington, uh, they were only going to get one one weekend off in 27. I'm not sure. Now, normally you get one weekend off at uh, four or five. If you're working nights, if you're working long hours, you're getting tired and there is a need for what we call safety critical decisions. Decisions about the safety of customers. If you are tired, it's harder to make those decisions and it's harder to make the right decision. When we do perform these shifts, one of the things what we wanted was that you wouldn't do two, the, both nights uh, consecutively because of uh, uh, you know, tiredness, exhaustion, all those uh, issues that uh, go with that. And um, we've not had anything back on that. Mm. Yeah, in fact, actually we did. We, what we got back was no, it'll be, on the roster the way it is and if they're the two duties that you do then they're the two duties. Night working has been shown to impact on workers lives. People who work night shifts consistently will have a shorter life than people that don't. They also have problems while they're working, they get digestive problems, they get problems with uh, sleep patterns, they get problems with depression, many night workers. Clearly that's all got to be taken into account. The job accepts that the shift workers, but there needs to be some mitigation so that it doesn't land too heavily on any one person, that it begins to danger, danger your health, that there needs to be some balance and some recovery time. People want to spend time with their family. They want to take their, their uh, children out of the weekend. They want to spend time with their, their partners and their friends. It's not much to ask. I think that's what any worker would ask is it's reasonable uh, time off, reasonable rest time. The unions aren't against night shift. We're happy to have it. We think it's a good thing, but we need to make sure it's implemented with enough staff and that it's done safely. A station like this will have three, maybe four night staff and that we consider is not a safe way of bringing it in. We deal now in King's Cross particular, late on at night with drunks, drugs, uh, people waiting a minimum amount of time on a platform for a train, we get them in and out of the station pretty quick. They're on about 15, 20 minute gaps of service with people who are intoxicated in groups, on platforms, with trains coming about every 20 minutes. They're already having fights amongst themselves and that's going to escalate to more, more attacks on passengers, attacks on uh, staff, which has gone up dramatically, the uh, actual assaults. And what the police are saying now is a lot of reported sexual assaults, um, particularly on, on young girls. Uh, when, when these trains leave Central London and they go out to the outer lying stations, you've got one station supervisor propose to look after three stations. So if there's an incident at one station and the train's out of action, how the hell they're supposed to get to the other stations is beyond us. We've been trying to raise all of these issues through our health and safety forums and trying to inquire as to the consultation that has or hasn't taken place with the London Fire Brigade, for example, because we have concerns around congestion 
on platforms, uh, evacuation procedures. We've also got concerns around minimum staffing levels that are required on stations for safety. Um, but that's information that we're not getting, we're not privileged to, so there is no real consultation taking place. On stations we have a concurrent dispute also over changes where there's been 950 job cuts from the station side, the closure of the ticket offices without proper facilities being put into place to deal with what the customer's needs are. One of our key issues here at King's Cross is the closure of all the ticket offices. Our last ticket office closes on the 23rd and that means any punters coming in with now with £50 note you can't use a machine, if you've got a seven day pass on you can't get a refund, if you've had the pass, the Oyster card, this is more than 48 hours you can't get a refund on that. All the things that they put forward to the London Assembly that you could do on these machines, it's absolute rubbish, total blatant lies. I've had loads of people this morning here at King's Cross in support of us because they're saying we're native English speakers, we cannot work these machines. They've already got rid of 2,000 jobs. They're trying to get rid of another 832 jobs. And when they're talking about bringing jobs in, they're only on a part-time basis. So really, it's an absolute shower of lies that they're putting out from their press office. Boris Johnson, an absolute disgrace. This is somebody who got elected on the fact that he wouldn't close the ticket office and get rid of front-line staff. He's now got rid, if this plan comes in, of nearly 3,000 people. And you can only stretch the elastic so far. You can't ask people to cover extra shifts and do away with staff. You have to employ more staff. The queues in there are horrendous as it is, and they need to open their eyes and see, and Boris needs to do what he promised and help the customers. It's not about the money for us. It's about the work-life balance, and it's about the safety of our customers. If we're not here, who's going to help anybody? And there's a lot of people with different access needs and disabilities. They need assistance from staff, whether it's putting ramps on or just making sure they get on a train that comes into a platform so they can get off. There has been no intention really, in our opinion, to get an agreement from management. It's a new set of managers who are new to the industry from backgrounds that don't include trade unions who are used to getting their way just because of the position they're in. All parties have been at ACAS, but the underground haven't actually been engaging in any meaningful dialogue with the trade unions. Um, and I can honestly say up until about a week, perhaps two weeks ago at very most, was the first time that the underground management actually faced the trade unions across the table. So up to that point, it was a case of trade unions sat in one room with the London Underground Management sat in another. Now, how can we actually get to any position um, that's going to be a benefit to all parties when they won't even engage with us in the same room? And any, any time they have come into the room of late, um, we're lucky if we get to see them for 30 minutes at most. It's sitting in negotiations and they, they haven't really been happening. Uh, management sat for weeks and weeks and weeks, didn't produce any offer whatsoever. Then produced an offer, it was completely unacceptable, then went away. I came back with an even worse one, and also telling us all the time that they're they're not uh, they're not allowed to move away from that by Boris Johnson, who by the way won't get involved in the negotiations himself. So we're in a position we, we're talking to people who can't really negotiate. There's plenty of money available in this country to provide uh, a decent transport system for the capital city of this country. It carries over four million passenger journeys a day. It's gone up three percent in the last year and is continuing to increase. It's got to be fully funded and they've got to find the money to do that. Our top bosses, many are on 200, 300, 600,000, have seen their wages go up by 59% in the last five years, plus the bonuses they get as well. From speaking with our members over the last couple of days, they are still deeply angry with the underground at present. And yes, they have actually been talking about escalating further industrial action. And that's a matter that we'll discuss with the other trade unions as well. Our engineers who work for a, uh, an organisation called Tube Lines, which is wholly owned by London Underground, will be balloted to join in this action because they've been offered the same deal and they've got the same sets of problems that everyone else has got. So we'll have our complete membership on London Underground in dispute from now. We made that decision today. So, and the next step will be an escalation of the dispute. This isn't going to go away. Um, we are going to not let this come in in its current form.